Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and today we kind of have a spur of the moment show that I just wanted to put together. I was opening up some beers, or getting ready to open up some beers here in the store today for today's tasting, and uh, just kind of picked two that looked interesting to me and figured why not just do a quick little show before we open. So uh, at least one of these two breweries we haven't uh, had on the show before, uh, and the other's a friend, so a uh, friend of the show. Uh, so what do we have here? We've got Jackie O's Paw Paw Wheat Ale, and we have Crooked Staves Origins. Um, what do these beers have in common? Nothing really, other than I felt like opening them. And let's see what they taste like. Grab this. Uh, Jackie O's, they are from Athens, Ohio, uh, home of the Ohio, uh, University of Ohio Bobcats, I learned. And the head brewer, uh, Brad Clark, and I met, man, years ago, when he was, we gonna have a gush? Slow gush. Uh, he and I went to Siegel together, so that was kind of fun. And he was just starting out his uh, barrel aging program at the time, so I got to try some of his early incarnations of uh, some of these barrel aged beers. The funny thing about stuff like this is if I tilt it and agitate it, it almost like makes it worse, so I'll probably just let it go for a little bit and spill a bit, sorry. Um, this is the uh, the Paw Paw Wheat Ale from Jackie O's. Um, it is uh, a, a wheat, uh, basically a fruited wheat beer. But the Paw Paw fruit, for those of you who may not know, is basically a tropical tasting fruit for, that's grown that grows in like the Midwest, in like Michigan and, and Ohio and places like that. Um, I tend to get uh, kind of like papaya-y mango flavors from it, um, but yeah, just kind of a fun fruit that I didn't really even know existed until I moved out here to the Midwest. Uh, hazy color here, uh, kind of a, a little bit of, of like a brownish gold color to it, really nice pretty white head that's sticking around really well. You can see it does, certainly does not have carbonation problems here. And it's got like a, a bit of a tart a hint at vegetal tropic fruit flavor. So think of like maybe a little underripe green mango, something like that with a bit of a, a bite to it still. Still some of that vegetal note to it. It also has some sweet uh, kind of honeyed grain flavors as well. Yeah, that's kind of how I would say, like a, a, a green a green tropical fruit and uh, just kind of a lovely base malt, little kind of cereal honey thing going on. It's funny, the carbonation is very delicate, I'll say. It's, it's not that kind of stinging carbonation. Uh, it's a very round, softed mouthfeel to this beer. Very easy drinking, very summery as this continues to just slowly get my table wet. What are you gonna do? Um, yeah, just nice. I mean, I'm almost getting hints of maybe strawberry or like a strawberry dessert with some of this like kind of creamy oatmeal oatmeal and peach kind of thing, those like oatmeal and peach packets that you used to eat as a kid, or maybe you still do. Um, but with a, a nice kind of a sort of green character to it, not quite acidity, but maybe a, a brightness to it, rather than like some of these nectar tropics that you can get um, sometimes with, with like citra and galaxy hops and stuff like that. This is actually coming from the fruit and does have a vegetal quality to it. Really nice stuff, really easy drinking. Something that I would like to have kind of a bigger glass of or maybe have in a six pack, something like that. But a fun little beer with a fruit you don't see used in beer too often and using kind of local indigenous fruits for their fruit wheat beer. Uh, kind of cool, cool stuff. So that is the Paw Paw Wheat from Jackie O's. Kind of a nice uh, first beer, uh, introductory beer to, uh, to the podcast here. Um, maybe if I cap this beer, will it help at all? Good thing about this is it keeps the cap so flat, you can almost just like recap it. I probably should have thought of that. 
before. Let's see if that works. Oh well, I might as well just leave it in a puddle, puddle of its own mess right now. Uh, okay, so now we've got the crooked stave. That won't work because it's waxed. Let's see if this works. It's got chunks of wax on it. This is the Origins. This is a sour beer. Uh, we've had Crooked Stave on before. Uh, they are from Denver. We're also going to get a slow gush. Probably should have chilled these down a little more. Uh, I've mentioned in the past uh, that these beers, uh, you know, if you're worried about gushing, chilling the beer down will uh, hold some of that carbonation in suspension better. Uh, this is a sour beer aged in uh, burgundy barrels. I would imagine red burgundy barrels, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, it's a burgundy sour ale aged in oak barrels. I take it back. Not necessarily burgundy barrels, but it's a burgundy colored. Playing with, playing with words there. Um, so, uh, Crooked Stave known very much for their use of uh, Britannomyces yeast, the quote-unquote wild yeast. Really nice uh, looking beer here. Pretty clear. Uh, uh, and definitely burgundy chestnut colored, uh, a little bit of a darker tan head as well, sticking around really fine bubbles. Oh man, a ton of oak, a ton of like toasted oak, but you're getting like uh, a really nice toasted wood, toasted um, nuts. Not that big vanilla coconut thing at all. Some vanilla, but, but not that coconutty tropical thing. It's not like you're smelling a thing of suntan lotion here. You're, it's like you're smelling a, an oaked red wine. And the interplay of the red fruits here and the toasted quality makes this extremely vinous. Now, if this was a wine I was getting ready to smell, uh, drink, I bet, wow, this beer, this wine is way, way uh, too oaky for my preference, but yeah, I mean, think big time California heavy oak red wine here, and, and that's what you're getting in the nose. Now, there is some acidity as well. You're getting kind of whiffs of, of, of acidity in there, which I don't think that's really a smell, but you know what I mean. And just kind of toasty, nutty, dark fruits, some like peppery qualities as well. Almost a little like leathery. Mm. Brighter acidic and it's a, a kind of a yin and yang you're getting these toasty nutty flavors but this kind of bright fruity acidity like sour cherries with like toasted almonds and like really roasted uh, flavors um, and then you throw some acidic cherries in there and that's kind of what what you get really really fun beer this is a, a really interesting beer that you would really want to kind of sit and think about A little bit of acetic acid here, the vinegar acid, but I think it, it, it plays perfectly uh, to this beer. This is to me like an American take on a Flanders red. There's a lot of oak character, there's a lot of bright acidity, there's a lot of that red fruit character. I don't think there is any fruit here, but this is just, you know, what the yeast is, is kind of putting out. Um, really nice. Um, the acidity is just kind of sitting there and kind of making my mouth water, almost like coagulating the saliva in my mouth. Sorry if that's a gross kind of thought in there. Uh, wow, I mean, Cricket Stave is just so fun. You never know what you're gonna get, but you know you're probably gonna be pleasantly surprised here, and that's definitely the case here. Uh, Burgundy Sour Ale, Asian Oak Barrels is, is you know, it's a, a fairly uh, uh, non-descriptive yet very descriptive um, title here or, or name for the beer or description of the beer and really fun. I'm gonna have a little bit more of it. Um, just a really really cool beer. Uh, fun stuff coming out of those guys from Crooked State. Guys there you have it. I gotta open. I gotta share some of this beer with people. I hope you enjoyed this very quick impromptu show. Again uh, let's get some questions going. Uh, send me some questions. I'm holding on to a few and I'm gonna start uh, reading them out here on the show. So if you have them, send them to info at craftbeertemple.com.
Uh, thanks as always guys. Uh, always appreciate the comments and reviews and stuff like that. Um, that's about it. Until next time, I've got some great beer to drink and hopefully you do too.